Today's topic, everybody, we're going to be talking about um, electricity. So this should be really fun. Uh, I know there's a, a lot of uh, a lot of confusion out there about uh, electricity and what we run into as contractors on a job site and things like that. So I really hope to address a lot of those issues. Um, and if you guys have questions along the way, please don't don't hesitate. Uh, send them in. I'll, I'll look at them. I'll try and answer them as best I can. Uh, and uh, we'll go from there. All right. So where to start? I say we're just going to go over, we'll start with a couple definitions of everything. So this way we're all on the same page when I start talking uh, about a little bit more complicated things. All right. So voltage. First thing I'm going to bring up. Okay. Voltage is basically electrical pressure, okay? So it's the push that causes charges to move in a wire or any type of conductor, okay? Amperage. Amperage is the, ve the, the measure of volume of electrons through one point at a time, okay? So let me repeat that. It is the measure of volume of electrons through one point at a time. All right. Ohms. Ohms is a unit of electrical resistance. Okay. Uh, so those, those first three things, that's going to translate into Ohm's law, okay, which we're going to talk about. So Ohm's law, by definition, is a law stating that electric current is proportional to voltage and inversely proportional to resistance, okay? So anybody, I got a whiteboard here and I'll draw it out. Uh, if, if you know what Ohm's Law is, or I'm sure you've probably heard of it, you've probably seen this diagram before. Voltage over I and R. Okay, this is Ohm's Law. Okay, let me write that on here. So why is Ohm's Law important? Okay, well, Ohm's Law is very important when you deal with electricity like we do. Okay, so your V is going to be voltage. Your I is going to be current or amperage. And your R is going to be resistance, which is ohms. Okay? So that's Ohm's law. Okay? So now why is this important? All right? Well, if you're trying to find out what your voltage is and you only have your current or your amperage and your, your ohms, okay, what you would do is you would multiply your your amperage and your ohms together and that would give you your voltage okay there's if you go online you type in ohms law there's big pie charts that come up um, and basically you have power voltage current and resistance and basically uh, it gives you the the mathematical equation to figure out each uh, whichever one of those that you're looking for so for example if you were looking for uh, resistance or the ohms okay there is a mathematical equation for that on that pie chart okay I could probably pull one up here let's see let's talk a little bit more about what we run into on a job site okay so I would say the, the number one most common question I get is is around your big machine, right? A lot of people run big machines, everybody runs a big machine, or a 220 volt machine, and they use a booster, okay? We have a booster here, all right? Um, and a lot of questions that I get is, well, why do I have to use a four wire cord to go into my booster, but not a four wire cord for my big machine, okay? Um, and Inversely, can I put my white wire and my ground wire together and use that as a three-wire plug to go in instead of the four-wire plug and have that 
uh, for my booster? The answer is no, you can't do that. And here's the reason why, okay? If I was to show you what electricity looks like on a sine wave, um, it would look like peaks and valleys, okay? Which I could draw that for you real quick, actually, here. All right, and the way 220 volt works, or we'll, we'll start out with 110 volts, I guess. We can have, uh, have this line here like this. Okay, this is time. This is your amplitude. This is your positive. This is your negative, okay? So, basically what you would see is, okay, um, on a sine wave, you would have, this is your, your equilibrium, which is basically your center line, okay? And it goes up and comes down, just like that, okay? So what you have, okay, is you have your peak and you have your opposite peak, okay? So what does that mean for us, all right? So it's pretty simple, okay? When you have 120 volts, okay, you have 120 here on your positive, and, and on the opposite side, you have 120 down here, or 110, whatever you want to call it, okay? And be the same thing, now 220 volts looks like this. Okay, that's what 220 volts look like. So, this is also 120, and this is also 120, okay? And basically what you have is, at opposite peaks at the same time, you have two different legs, both with 120 volts. That's why when you go and you look into a panel, okay, and you have all your breakers lined up, okay, each breaker, as you can probably see, okay, uh, the, you have one, and it's connected to not the next one, but the one, it's every other one, it's connected. And the reason for that is, okay, is because each one is on a different pole or an opposite pole, okay? So that's why you're able to get 220 volts, okay, into one breaker because you're pulling off of opposite poles, okay? So, before I get in over my head, <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about what the what that that white wire that neutral wire means when you're plugging in your booster okay and why you can't use it as a uh just put it together with the ground and have it be a three wire okay so give me one second okay um so you have your booster which is right here okay this machine uh, this booster box has a ground in it okay and this ground is grounded to the metal box okay so when you're grounded to the metal box, and let's just say you took your uh, three wire, okay, and you plugged it into this instead of the four wire, and you joined your, your neutral wire and your ground wire, okay, what you just did was the white wire people call neutral. It's really more technically called an opposite potential. And it's called an opposite potential because it's there as a, as a, uh, how do I explain this? As, as the opposite potential for your, your main potential coming in. It's the back end of it, okay? And it goes to ground, okay? And when you're in the panel, you have your ground bar and your neutral bar, okay? And when you have your neutral bar, okay, everybody says, well, why is it that the ground bar and the neutral bar, why do I need to have a ground and a neutral? Because they both go to the same place. Yes, that is, th that is correct. They go to the same place. They all go to a very fat ground. And you can see that when you're in a panel, okay? Um, they go to a very fat ground, and that's a direct line to ground, okay? When you take your four wire and you make it a three wire at your box, okay, what you're doing is you're taking that ground, uh, that, that neutral wire, I'm sorry, and you're putting it to the ground in the box. So when you have, let's say, a three wire going to your booster box, okay, and your ground and neutral on the same leg, what's going to happen is when you go and you touch something, the operator now becomes the ground, and you become the opposite potential. And that's why it's very dangerous to do that and why you don't want to do that, okay? Um, if you look right on the side of our box, we have a label here, and it's got instructions on it. And I'll read you these instructions, okay? It says, in terms of connections, input. Only use a four wire cord, minimum 10 four gauge wire, 
and a 30 amp 250 volt four wire locking connector. It comes with our booster. Uh, in terms of output, only use a 20 amp three wire locking plug. Okay. Now, the other thing that, that is on here, we talk about the power booster itself. Okay, and as you can see, I'll hold it up again. You have your, this is your input, where your four wire input, this is your output. Okay, now with our boosters, we only boost, we only give the, the opportunity to boost your 220 volt uh, outlet up here. Okay, I'm sorry, this one. Uh, the 110 outlets on the bottom, they're not boosted at all. Okay, so. You can run your booster with a, with a big machine and another accessory if you want, but you need to, you need to observe the uh, amperage ratings on each one of those machines to make sure that you are not over the 30 amps that the box is regulated for. Okay, um, I personally do not like to run more than one piece of equipment off my booster at a time uh, because I feel that. Uh, Anything can happen on a job site, and in my experience, anything, I, I am a walking example of Murphy's Law. Anything, you know, bad that can happen will happen, and it always happens to me. So, that being said, uh, I only like running one machine off my booster box at a time. The reason why is because sometimes your machine, if, if something's going wrong with your machine, you might see an amperage spike in that, and that could overload your box and cause potential damage for your box. Uh, so, that's why I like to limit my box to one piece of machine or one piece of machinery at a time uh, because you never know what's going to happen if something's going to fail uh, and you you might be running two machines and you might be right at that threshold for what the box is rated for but then if something happens with one of your machines um, you could you could uh, potentially damage your box in the future, okay? So what is the solution when dealing with an old three-prong connection uh, dryer slash, slash stove outlet? Okay, so the solution would be, and this is what I tell everybody uh, in terms of electricity is one, you should, nobody should be going into a panel unless you have a, a, a license to do so. Okay, that being said, when you guys are going out on, on job estimates and, and things like this uh, where, you know, you're, being, you're going on a job to, to quote somebody on a, a price to do their floors, right, or to do any kind of work in their house, you know um, what your needs are as a professional, okay? Your needs are access to a 220-volt uh, uh, outlet, okay? So, if you walk into a house, part of your estimate should be, you should be looking at their panel, uh, if they have a plug or a dryer plug or a range, something that you can plug into, okay? And if they don't, you should be pricing out to them, uh, you know, having an electrician come in and set up, even if it's just a temporary plug for you to do your work. That should be part of your quote, okay? Because you're not authorized, it's illegal for you to go into the panel and start messing around inside there. You don't want to get caught doing that. The other reason why is because it's extremely dangerous. Um, you know, I don't, I don't recommend doing it. I don't like doing it. I've, you know, um, I've, I've watched electricians do it, and you know, uh, a, a lot of guys out there do a lot of crazy things that I would never do. I know there's a lot of guys out there that run alligator clips, and I'll get into that in a second too uh, of why that's not a good thing to do and why that's bad practice. Um, you know, there's, there's. So I guess before I deviate too much, the solution is get an electrician there to provide you with a temporary uh, outlet so that you can properly run your equipment. That is the solution, okay? Going off next, I want to go over the next most important tool that you guys should have in your toolbox, and that's this, okay? This is a digital volt an ohm meter otherwise referred to referred to as a dvom okay digital volt ohm meter okay this is by far my favorite tool in my toolbox um and you know i get calls all day every day um you know people having issues with their machines and my typically my first question to them is do you have a voltmeter 
And if they do, I first thing I have them do is check power. Okay, everything we do revolves around having good power. Okay, having a good power saw source, making sure that you are able to properly run your equipment so you can uh, provide the best possible product for your for your customers. That, it's it's that simple. So here, I have a four wire plug. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my my voltmeter up to voltage. Okay, and let me see if I could. If I put this here, maybe you guys can see it. Kind of, sort of, not really. But anyway, so I have my voltmeter. Okay, I'm going to put it here. I'm going to take my black lead. I'm going to use that as a, I'm going to put that in my ground. Okay, and I'm going to take my red lead and I'm going to check both legs. Okay, so right now I'm reading 120 volts in the one leg. And the opposite leg, I'm reading 120 volts. And in my neutral, I'm reading nothing, which is exactly what we want, okay? So now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that four wire plug and I'm gonna plug it into my booster. And if my voltmeter is accurate, it should tell me exactly what I had on my my voltmeter. Uh, the, and I had, 100, I had 119 on both, and I have 238 on the voltmeter on my booster. So I know that my meter's accurate, okay? Now, Taking this a step further, let me pull this down here and let me show you what else you could do. Uh, okay, so we have our booster box, okay, 238. Okay, now if I want to check just to make sure that the voltmeter on my, my booster is okay, okay, I can check the voltage here. Again, ground, I'm going to put here in my ground, uh, my black wire, red. 119 there. And if I could get the lead right. 119 there. Okay, so I know I have good power coming out of here. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is voltage drop. Okay, so a lot of people ask, oh, well, do I need to use a booster um, if, I'm, if I'm only running, you know, 75 feet of cord? And the answer is, is no, you don't need to run a booster, uh, you know, with, with 50 or, or 75 feet of cord. That's, that's not a, a requirement. So, you know, if you're in an older house, you know, like uh, the question I just answered, if you're in an older house that's only got a three-prong uh, plug and you don't want to call an electrician, um, you don't have to. You could plug your, your cord directly in there, your three-wire cord right into that, and you could run your machine off of that all day. Use your voltmeter. Make sure that you have proper voltage going to your machine, um, and you'll be fine. You, you could run your machine off that all day, every day. No issues. Okay? Now, um, if, if you don't have the proper power there, you're going to have to call an electrician anyway, uh, you know, because that's beyond your realm as a foreign contractor. Uh, so any way you slice it, you should have, you know, in your estimates or, you know, when you talk to people, if you don't have proper power available to you, you know, an electrician should be in the conversation. Okay. Um, that being said, going on to, uh, what I was just about to talk about is voltage drop, right? With, with our big machines. So, uh, if you have an older house or, um, where you, where you only have the three, three wire plug. Um, and you want to run, say, 150 feet, um, you're going to have to, again, call an electrician to, to set up a temporary plug for you to plug in your booster box. Uh, you know, I always recommend anything 100 feet or more uh, in terms of a cord. You want to be using a booster, um, especially with some machines out there that are a little bit more voltage sensitive, uh, where voltage drop is definitely a big variable. Uh, when when uh, you bring that into the equation, you you again, like I said, you want to have that uh, electrician in the conversation if if you don't have the proper power for you on that job site. Okay, uh, and again, come circling back to safety. You know, you guys, again, I'm going to repeat it again. You guys, unless you have a a license to do so, you should not be going into a panel and hooking up. Uh, this this is all part of you know making sure you guys stay safe. Uh, you know part of the reason why I do these videos is to to help educate you guys that you guys shouldn't be taking any unnecessary risk, right? Um, you, you shouldn't be putting yourself in harm's way to you know uh, to to sand somebody's floor um, when in all reality you know just for a couple extra bucks to the homeowner, uh, it's it's really you know 
it, it, it's it's protecting you, you know, uh, and it's protecting you from any other potential, you know, power issue liability that you may run into on a job site, you know. Um, so that's what I would recommend in terms of that. Uh, like I said, if you're going to be running 150 feet of cord, 200 feet of cord, I definitely recommend you use a booster. Um, and if there's not a plug that you could plug into a four wire plug, call an electrician, get him to wire it up. Like I said, it could be, you know, he might, you know, depending on what the electrician's going to do, I would say nine times out of 10, he's going to put up a temporary plug for you. When the job's over, he'll come take it down unless the homeowner wants to keep it. What if voltmeter shows proper voltage and ground with three wire plugged into it, would there still be a chance of shock to the operator? Uh, if you're bypassing the four wire, yes, Rick. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, because of what I just explained. Talked a little bit about voltage, uh, why you don't want to take your, uh, <clears throat> why, uh, why you don't want to take your, your, your four wire out and put a three wire in. Uh, we talked about um, our boosters only boost the 220 leg um, and not the 110 leg. Uh, what it does do is though, is when you're hooked uh, with a four wire um, in, into a plug, you now have a dedicated 20 amp breaker for your 110. Okay, so a lot of guys that have a 110 FX, you'll hear a lot of them say, oh, well, I use my booster with it. And it's not because they're boosting anything on their 110. It's that as per, you know, the owner's manual in your 110 Epic, it says you need to use that machine with a dedicated 20 amp circuit. Um, and when you hook into the booster and you're not running anything else off of it, um, you, that now becomes a dedicated 20 amp circuit. Okay. And I'm going to show you guys how to test capacitors. take our, our cover off. The machine's not plugged in, which is one thing you always want to check when you're doing any kind of electrical work. Okay, again, safety first. Okay, and then we have our capacitor box. Okay, and put these here, put these here. So, I explained this a little bit uh, a couple weeks ago when uh, I was talking about, I was talking about buffers, um, and I was talking about the RS-16 and why you shouldn't put weights on it, okay? And here's a prime example, okay? So this machine has, down here we have a Simpac switch, which a Simpac switch is a electric start switch. And we have two start capacitors, which are this one here and this one here. And then we have this metal one, which is the run capacitor, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unplug the run capacitor. Good. Okay, and we'll come back over here. Okay, so we have our capacitor here. Okay, and we're going to talk about capacitance. Okay, now if you look at your capacitor. Okay, you see a little number, and I'll try and show this to you as best as possible. Let me unplug this. And if you could see it, it says 40 UF. So what is UF? UF is a microfarad, okay? So microfarad is commonly uh, used to, to measure capacitance, okay? Um, and... It's actually the F that, because it's technically a farad, but microfarad is what the U is. Um, so as you see on here, it says 40 UF plus or minus 6%. So plus or minus 6% basically means that when we go to test this, um, and I'm, I'm going to put my, my voltmeter right here. If you see, there's a little, it's, I'll draw it for you here so you guys could, could see. <clears throat> The, to know if your meter is able to measure or test capacitance, okay, it's got to have this symbol that's right down here. So it looks like a sideways T and then a curved, almost like an umbrella. Looks like that. Okay, that is, that is the sign for uh, 
capacitance. Okay, so if your if your meter has that, you're in luck because you can me measure capacitance. Okay. Now the other little thing next to it is actually a, a diode symbol, and I'll go over that in a little bit. But essentially, what we're going to do is, can you see that there? Okay. So OL, a lot of people think on your meter that that means overload. That actually doesn't. It means open line. Uh, so a lot of people sometimes uh, when you're when you're fiddling with some plugs in a breaker uh, or not in a breaker like in a receptacle and it keeps saying oh well it's because you're not making proper contact on on both of the uh, the conductors inside that terminal and it's reading open line because you haven't completed the circuit yet okay so I'm going to touch one lead to one side and the next to the other okay and of course let's see Oh, I gotta switch it. Yo. There we go. So that reads 41.6. So that is within the 40 UF plus or minus 6%. Okay? So I know that this capacitor is good. So like I was talking about before, the reason how I know this is the run capacitor, A, not only because it's level of capacitance, but also because it's metal. Okay? So, let me bring this up so you guys could see my beautiful face. Okay. Typically, in a circuit, when you have capacitors, all right, um, the run capacitors are metal, and the start capacitors are plastic. And let me go grab a start capacitor real quick. Okay, here's your, your start capacitor. Okay, and this is a... 161 to 193 UF rated uh, capacitor. Okay, so I know this is my start and I know this is my run. The reason why I know that is because the start capacitor only gives capacitance to a machine during start, excuse me, during startup. Okay, so it doesn't need to be in the circuit for very long because what happens is once the motor gets up to 80% of, uh, of its max speed, it actually kicks out the start windings and the run windings then take over, okay? That's when this capacitor starts to come into play, okay? And the reason why it's metal is because metal dissipates heat much better than plastic, okay? Now, in order to save money, manufacturers start capacitors because they don't have to worry about dissipating heat because start windings don't stay in the circuit for very long. Um, they can build them out of plastic because heat is really not a concern. Run capacitors, on the other hand, because they stay in the circuit, as long as the machine is running properly, um, have to dissipate heat because they're in the circuit and they're going to build up some heat. Not much, but, you know, they want to dissipate heat as best possible, so that's why they go to a metal capacitor. Okay, so if you guys want, I'll test this start capacitor just so you guys could see that as well. Okay, so... Again, so again, this one is a 161 to 193. Okay, so we'll take our two leads. One here, one here. 171, 171, 172. Okay, so that's right in the center of where this capacitor is rated, so we know this capacitor is good too. Now, um, a lot of times guys will be saying, oh, you know, Let's bring this up again. I think that, nope. Okay. A lot of guys will say, oh, you know, I'm running my, my big machine, and, you know, after about uh, 20 minutes or so, uh, it'll it'll cut off. Uh, why is that? Well, what's happening? And it, that's happening for two reasons. Uh, one, you probably have a bad capacitor, um, and it's not giving the machine... Uh, the proper added power. Okay, so what a, what a capacitor basically does is it, add capa it adds capacitance. And capacitance is basically um, extra power to make sure that the machine and the motor run smoothly. Okay, um, and and they'll store some, some power too. Um, you know, I have a video from when I worked at KO, I did, uh, you know, uh, diagnosing a bad. Uh, Hummel run capacitor that's on YouTube. You could watch that, and you'll see. You know, you want to discharge those capacitors because if you touch them, uh, you know, you'll you'll get a good shock. And I've gotten shocked by them, and it's not fun. Uh, so you'll see. I always use. Uh, I just had them my my pliers over there, and I'll I'll kind of just touch the terminals together, make sure they're they're not storing any juice in them. Um, so 
again, getting back to, you know, oh, my machine cuts off at after about 20, 30 minutes of use, uh, it kind of gets hot. So it's happening for two reasons. One, because you you probably have a bad run capacitor and B, because that's your thermocoupler that's inside the motor that's designed to not let the machine overheat is kicking it off. Okay. Um, so what's happening is your machine is running without that run capacitor and it's getting super hot and that thermocoupler is coming in and kicking that machine off for you so that you don't do any real severe damage to your machine or to the motor I should say um, and that's why that's happening okay so um, let's see here we could talk a little bit about um, you know amperage spikes and things like that especially um, in say your edgers okay a lot of people uh, don't really know too much about this or, or know about it in general is that when your brushes get really low on your edgers um, you're actually creating a higher amperage draw okay um, and what's happening is because you have that higher amperage draw your machine's gonna run a little bit hotter and it's actually gonna be doing a little bit of damage to your machine so that's why it's it's a lot easier to frequently change out your brushes in in your edgers and, and things like that um, so that you don't cause any kind of motor damage to your machines okay so that's just another reason why you want to stay on top of your maintenance and constantly be be pulling off the the lids of your edgers and checking you know the brush life and things like that because all that stuff does come into play all right um i have only used the three wire show us the four wire which my plug into my sander is three um okay so i guess here i'll just show this to you so david a lot of people use a four wire plug um, when they're using a booster and if when the video is over and you go back and, and watch it um, as, as you can see here the input I'm sorry over here the input is a four wire okay one two three and four okay and your output is only the three wire which would be for your for your machine which is you know your standard three wire plug okay Okay, no other questions so far, which is good. Um, so, okay, so I just finished talking a little bit about, um, you know, the the brushes in your machine and, and have how, you know, if your brushes are really worn down, that'll actually, um, you know, cause your machines to run at a little bit higher amperage and potentially cause damage to your armature, to the motor inside your edger. So that's another reason why you want to stay on top of maintenance and, uh, and con continuously be checking on, you know, your brushes of your machines. And not, not only just your brushes on your, your edgers, but all of your equipment. You always want to make sure that you are you're staying up to date in terms of maintenance on everything. Um, another really good tool, which I've talked about on here before, um, which I'll show you guys right now, that can help you guys diagnose something super early, if there might be an issue or not, um, is the, the power lap, which is, okay, which is your, your power lap, which is this tool right here. Okay, so this thing is great because it's gonna let you know exactly what amperage your machine is running at so if i plug this in here okay and i turn this thing on okay so what i have is it's a voltmeter right on top as you can see here then underneath here it's going to read your amperage okay it's got a 20 amp gfic and a little its own little circuit breaker so a great thing about this tool is um, I like to use it, A, for maintenance. Um, I keep this on one of my workbenches, and I plug every machine that I fix into this before I do anything. It lets me know um, exactly what's going on with that machine. So if I bring an edger into, uh, into my workshop for repair, I'm going to plug it into here, and I'm going to turn it on, and I'm going to see exactly what amperage it's running at. And uh, depending on what the number is in terms of amperage, it's going to help me diagnose what is potentially wrong with that machine um the next thing that i like to use it for is when i'm buffing a floor um and it's actually going to tell me because of the amperage draw whether or not my my sandpaper is um is still sharp or not okay so if i see a a dip if i see a dip in my amperage okay uh is it different yeah, if I see a dip in my amperage, I, I know that my paper is not sharp anymore because it's not grinding into the floor, 
okay? Uh, so I'm going to have less of an amperage draw because it's not exerting as much work. The machine isn't doing as much work because the, the paper is dull. So this is really good for if you have a guy that's a little bit newer uh, on, a, on a job site or something like that, you can have them kind of, you know, as they're paying attention to what they're doing with the floor, you can have them use the power lab and tell them to keep their eye on the amperage. And once they start seeing that amperage drop, they know that their paper is wearing out. Um, so it's kind of a, a scientific way, I guess you could say, of of knowing when your paper is dull and, and it's going to help you more accurately diagnose how far uh, or how much life you're getting out of your paper in terms of square feet, you know. Um, so which is, again, going to help you with your scratch pattern in the floor um, and your consistency with that scratch pattern throughout the floor. So uh, a lot of really good uses with that power lab um, aside just from a maintenance thing. Uh, it's also it's also great because with that voltmeter, as soon as I plug it into a wall, I know what my voltage is at the wall. You know, so if I have a house that's got low power, um, or it's not true 120 volts, at, you know, at the plug, I'm gonna know right away. So I'm gonna know, um, you know, when I turn my machine on or when I go to plug something into it, I'm gonna know even before I plug it in if if it, there might be an issue. Um, so. At what point do we go 90% on a booster when a booster reads 235, 240? So, uh, Rick, that's that's all kind of conducive to what machine you have, um, number one, and if that machine is voltage sensitive or not. Uh, so I talked about that uh, in one of the previous videos I did about uh, one of my favorite things about the Floor Crafter is that it's not as voltage sensitive as some of the other m big machines out there. Um, you know, that machine can run off of 208 volts all the way up to, I believe, 240 volts, which is a really big range for, for that type of, uh, for that piece of equipment. Um, so sometimes when, what will happen is, uh, you know, I've had people call me and they've, they've plugged into a four wire plug before and they're reading, you know, 250 volts. Um, but they're reading 250 volts at, you know, 100%, not at 110. Um, and they're only running a 50 foot cord that's going to be a perfect example for you to drop it down to 90 um so that you're not putting over uh too much voltage into the machine so you don't you don't over juice it um another uh example of, you know of when you might want to use that or maybe not 90 percent, but the other added benefit is um or the other aspect i guess that you want to take into consideration would simply be this Okay, if you have 200, 250 volts, uh, you know, at 100% and you're running 200 feet of cord, you might not want to touch it. You might want to leave it at 100% and 250 because you're going to go to the end of 200 cord, 200 feet of cord, and you're going to check it with your voltmeter and uh, you're, you're going to see if what the voltage drop is essentially, you know, over that 200, 200 feet of cord, the length of that cord, um, you know, you're going to have voltage drop and it's going to be significant. Um, and, and all that stuff is stuff that you as a professional need to take into consideration, uh, when, when you're running all of your equipment, uh, you need to know exactly what kind of power is going into your machine. So, you know, you know, if you're taking care of your equipment, uh, because uh, if you're not, um, you know, you could potentially damage your equipment and then you're down and you're, you can't make money, right? Uh, you can't sand floors because you have downed equipment. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why I love the Power Booster. It's one of the reasons why I love the Power Lab 120 because it's just these little things. They don't take up barely any space on your truck. Um, they're, they're light, they're easy to transport, um, and they're small investments for you to protect your bigger investments, right? Um, they're investments that you make in, in yourself to protect the, the primary piece of equipment that make you money and put food in your mouth. Um, that's that's as, as simple as I can make it, you know? Yeah, that, that's why I just love having them. I love, anytime I go on a demo, I always make sure I bring both of them out and I show everybody them. I show them how to use them. Um, and I, I, you know, I every every time I, I do that everybody is asking you know basically all the questions you guys are asking you know where where can i buy one how much are they you know is there a used one i could buy i get those questions all the time um unfortunately let me see if i could pull up the price for you right now so power booster power lab uh list price on it 
Uh, it says the list price is 355 for the Power Lab 120. That's this one. And the list price on a booster says 1056. Anybody who sells our equipment has access to these tools, um, to these meters, and uh, you know they can absolutely get you pricing on it. So don't hesitate. Reach out to your local distribution, uh, and uh, and and have them order it up for you. Um, you know, uh, I know, <laughs> unique. Uh, take my money on that 120. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, trust me. It's a it's a great investment to make. Uh, you know. For yourself uh, and and for your tools and um, you know like what Lori was talking about it's great when you plug in the um, your your 110 epic in there because it's giving you a real-time view of uh, what kind of amperage you're pulling with your 110 epic and I know I talked about that a couple videos ago um, you know the, the 110 epic a lot of guys like to heal into it and and dog it and and that's why they see these big amperage spikes um, when in reality with the 300 RPM and, and a weight or two or a couple weights on there, you don't need to do that. Just let the machine do its, it, let the machine do the work. You don't, you know, um, slow is smooth, smooth is fast, right? If you keep healing into your machine, um, and dogging it and you, you start having these big amperage spikes, guess what? Your machine is gonna, is gonna pop a breaker or your machine is gonna stop working properly. Now you have downtime, right? If you run the machine, nice and easy you let the machine do the work you just let it do its thing okay slow is smooth smooth is fast okay the less hiccups you have on a job the more efficient you're going to be it's as simple as that you know so they're both great tools and and the power booster itself which i have right down here um is great for p protecting you know all of your investments you know because it's got the 110 receptacles on there as well um so whether you're using an edger a vacuum uh your big machine um, an easy eight, um, you know, whatever you're, you know, you're protecting that investment because that's got the voltmeter on there right there. And you can control exactly what type of voltage is going into your piece of equipment. The other most important tool that you guys should have, you know, you could go to Home Depot, Lowe's, any hardware store. You don't have to, I mean, I have a fluke. I like fluke a lot. Um, you know, I, in my lifetime, I've, uh, I've done a lot of electrical work. I used to be a, a car mechanic, and after that, I did some HVAC work and stuff like that. So it always paid for me to have a really good meter. That's why I have a Fluke. Um, but the ones you buy at Home Depot or Lowe's, uh, they're good. They're, they're, it's not like you're wasting your money on them. They're good meters. Uh, you don't need to spend, you know, a couple hundred bucks on anything. You spend 30, 40, 50 bucks on a, on a good meter. And it's just something for you to just check your cords before you plug it in if you don't have a booster. Um, or if you do have a booster but you're still running 150, 200 feet, you still want to check that. Um, you know, because voltage drop is a real thing. Um, and, and it could damage your machines. So yeah, if you guys have questions, go ahead, ask them. If not, um, you know, I'm just going to hang out here for a couple more minutes, be, see if any questions do come in. But, um, you know, other than that, I hope everybody is out there staying safe. Uh, you know, I know some guys are probably starting to, uh, to get back to work, which is great. Uh, you know, I've been seeing a lot of that on, on Facebook and, and social media and stuff that a lot of guys are starting to go back to work, which is, which is awesome. Uh, if you guys are in my territory and you want me to come out and do a, um, an onsite demo with, with any of our products, some finish, whatever it may be, you know, our finish we have, like I talked about, we have that, the new amp additive that's in there. Um, the antimicrobial protection, uh, a lot of guys are starting to ask for that. And I've been doing a lot of demos with that stuff. Uh, it's, it's really great. Um, it's awesome, especially when you, especially when you manage your customers ex expectations and when you inform them of the various products that they can choose from when you have, um, a product like the timber guard with the amp in it. Um, that definitely uh, perks their ears up a little bit and they like hearing that kind of stuff. So um, if you haven't used our finish yet, reach out to me, let me know, and uh, we could set something up. If you want me to come out and do an on-site demo and we're in the same, uh, if you're in my territory, basically my territory is from uh, eastern Pennsylvania all the way down to Florida, Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama, and everything in between. Uh, so if you guys are in my territory and you want me to come out and do a demo with you guys, vacuums, big machines, edgers, finish, whatever it may be, just give me a call.
So for today, you know, thank you everybody for stopping in. I, I really do appreciate it. So with that being said, again, everybody stay safe, happy, healthy, enjoy your weekend. This is American Sanders Kevin helping you get the advantage. Take care, guys. Jeez, I've been talking for almost an hour already. I didn't feel like that at all.